Solomon Northup is an expert player on the violin. I was born a free man, lived with my family in New York. Be good for your mother. Until the day I was deceived. To Solomon. Kidnapped, sold into slavery. Well, boy, how you feel now? My name is Solomon Northup. I'm a free man. And you have no right whatsoever to detain me. You're no free man. You're nothing but a Georgia runaway. It was a vile, disgusting, violent time in history. And I think people are very, very ashamed of it, and understandably so. But for me, now is a time to sort of, again, as an artist, once you sort of have a situation where you could work with material um, in a way that you could present it to the public in, in a way that you feel is urgent because it hasn't been uh, looked at uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a real way before, as far as I'm concerned, um, it, it, it makes it much more um, sort of, how can I say, important in a way. As I know, we get we were traveling. We wish we'd die trying. Survival's not about certain death. It's about keeping your head down. Days ago, I was with my family. In my home. Now you tell me all is lost. Tell no one who I am. That's the way to survive. Well, I don't want to survive. I want to live. What about the aesthetics of it, though? It's quite, it's quite daring in terms of, of the way you tell the story, not just the story itself, right? How so? Daring aesthetically, how? Yeah. Um, I guess in terms of the protracted long shots. Oh, okay. And in terms of the art installation aspects. Art installation aspects. <laughs> I don't understand that. I mean, that's not a question, really, because, I mean, art, uh, look, c cinema is cinema. Images are images. You put them in the frame, it's cinema. You cannot say that this image is art installation or this is cinema, because it's not. You, because you're putting it, you're lacing it in the tradition of narrative. A narrative is a situation where it's still growing, as far as cinema is concerned. Cinema is, what, 120 odd years old? So it's a baby. There's no right and wrong way of doing things. Um, there's only a way of doing things which actually one responds to emotionally or within a narrative context. And that servant that don't obey his lord shall be beaten with many stripes. That's scripture. The condition of your laborers, it's all wrong. They're my property. You say that with pride. I say it as fact. It's 150 years since these events happened, which is an incredibly short amount of time historically, you know, and we live in the same era as the events that these things happened in and uh, with seismic differences, but also with numerous similarities. So we understand our societies as well through the history of our societies. So um, I think we can draw uh, parallels and relevances from stories like this. I went to Master Shaw's plantation. Ah, you admit it? Yes, freely. And you know why? I got this from Mrs. Shaw. Mrs. Zepps won't even grab me no soap to clean with. I stink so much I make myself gag. 500 pounds of cotton, day in, day out. More than any man here. And for that I will be clean. That's all I ask. Do you think mainstream cinema is becoming less timid? Um, no, I, I feel that um... I think audiences are, have always been up for looking at good stories, no matter what environment or, in, or what sort of um, areas you present them, the story. I mean, I don't really, there's nothing which is up. I mean, the, I think this, the question is interesting because what it is, what it, what it sort of saying in a way is, are there stories that cannot be told or can be told? And I think everything can be told. There shouldn't be any censorship on stories at all. A story like this is kind of once you happen upon it, and I think as Steve did, and uh, and um, you know, and his wife Bianca found the, the book. I think you can either you sort of get caught up in a kind of passion to tell th that story. I think, and I think that's what happened to Steve. He's also somebody who looks for maybe those stories that seem as if they're not really told and they're not really, they're sort of ignored or they're overlooked and, um, uh, and perhaps that's true and so I think with something like this and shame and 
hunger. He's somebody who sort of looks into those kind of the those areas, you know. Which um, you know, I don't know if that leads the way for other people to do it. It's possible, but um, but I think he's. I think he's. It's true that uh, that not a lot of um, filmmakers really look for those kind of stories that much. There'd be more stories about Roman slavery and Spartacus, for example, than uh, American slavery. So it's just was one of those things where. Um, it was a story which was which was which was extraordinarily interest, interesting, but not only interesting, extraordinary, <laughs> you know. And also the fact that it was slavery. Yeah, I suppose people could, could 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 say that because maybe that film hasn't been presented before in this way. I don't know if it's necessary. Um, all I can say is that I'm happy I made it. <laughs>